We all want our children to be free to pursue their dreams. I look at my eight-year-old who has tons of freckles, who runs around and loves to swim, and I look at the way that he smiles at me. He wants to be a baseball player. He's interested in broadcast journalism. He dreams big, and, you know, there's no reason to not. Your son will be everything that he's intended to be. The phone rang. And I just remember very vividly both of us picking up the phone at the same time. So we were both on the phone uh, when the pediatrician's office called. The voice on the other end said, I'm calling to let you know that some tests came back abnormal for Brady. And I remember asking, well, what is PKU? And her response was, and I still remember, I think, word for word, well, I'm not quite sure. I don't know a lot about PKU, but, but I, do I know, know it causes, causes mental, mental retardation. retardation. That moment is so vivid to me because it really did change our lives. And I remember driving down, it takes about 30 minutes to get downtown from our house, and I don't think we spoke a word uh, to each other the entire trip. I think we were both completely silent. The plans you have for your child and the vision that you have for what he or she is going to be. You just want them to grow and blossom in every way that they're supposed to. That 30 minute drive seemed like all those things that I envisioned for him, in my mind, all of those things were gone. At Biomarin, I think about bringing life-changing products to patients who have the most unmet medical need. We tackle the hard problems and we tackle these challenges because if we're not willing to do it, who will? I have PKU. PKU is short for phenylketonuria. PKU is a very significant disease. I think people misunderstand or underestimate how much this disease impacts the patient. Food is everywhere. It's part of everyone's social life. Whenever you're from, it's about food. We socialize over food. Food is a part of every major holiday. When I was younger, I didn't really know how to explain the PKU. Nowadays, I just put it in the easiest terms. I tell them I'm allergic to protein. PKU is a deficiency where patients can't break down or what we call metabolized protein too much of it, it's toxic. Excess phenylalanine goes into the brain and it causes damage. I got a call that Connor's newborn screen had come back positive for something called PKU. I remember that night, I'm holding this baby in my arms. I'm breastfeeding him, I'm giving him nourishment, and I feel like I'm feeding him poison. We describe PKU as a vicious cycle of decline. And as patients' fee levels increase, their symptoms increase. We typically hear patients say it's like they're in the PKU fog. They can't think clearly. They can't hold down a job. They can't maintain social or an emotional relationships. People use the label diet as if that's easy, right? Oh, well, you know, you just restrict the diet. But they don't understand just how horrible that is. Meats, eggs, fish cheese, milk. We could not have any of those things. With PKU, it's a forced vegan, but then half the foods that vegans eat take that away as well. Like spinach was a higher protein vegetable. Pastas and even breads too high in protein. It almost felt impossible. And if they don't restrict the fee in their diet, then they have these horrible neurocognitive problems. Short term, the effects are I can be really irritable, have a short fuse. It's that whole ability to focus and concentrate, problems with sleeping, problems with social relationships. Sometimes it can be really hard for me to focus, kind of like the lights are on and nobody's home. These people live substantially lower than their potential in life. And that gap between Living life to my full potential and being hampered in my life is a big gap. I have to think about PKU in the world before newborn screening. These patients would be born, and by the age of four or five years old, they were completely mentally retarded because of the neurotoxic effects that fee had on their brain and had on their bodies. If you've never seen someone totally untreated with PKU, you don't understand. In the old days, the institutions were filled with them. They used to be called um, schizophrenic, but they weren't really. Often they couldn't walk or talk. As they got into adolescence and adult life particularly, the patients were really struggling. 
These patients are in group homes. They're nonverbal. Many of them have to wear helmets because they'll, you know, they'll beat their head against the wall because the phenylalanine has been destructive to their brain. Robert Guthrie was a biochemist in Buffalo. He said, what if we screened them and figured out how to treat them before any brain damage occurred? With the introduction of newborn screening and the introduction of the fee-restricted diet, they no longer had those intellectual disabilities. Diet is a wonderful thing. It absolutely changed EKU management and protected children's brains. But when people went to a metabolic clinic, they were told at age five, six, seven, eight that they could go off diet, that their brains were done developing and they didn't need to follow their PKU diet. We've lost generations of people with PKU because they were taken off of the diet. In 2000, the National Institute of Health put out a consensus statement and said that patients should be on diet for life. However, there was still no true treatment to treat the underlying cause of your PKU. There's been a lot of twists and turns in, in Biomarin's history. And we were at one point developing a product called Neutralase. We were in the midst of a phase three study when Data Safety Board says this is not a safe product. And so literally over a weekend's time, we pulled the plug. And at the time, Kuvan was really a skunk works project. And then suddenly there were 25 people ready to go. Monday morning, they came in and we started talking about Kuvan for PKU. At the time, there was some turmoil in Biomarin. Stock price had gone down to $3 a share. There was concerns that we would not even make payroll. We were literally out of money. Uh, we didn't have a CEO at the time. It was about as bleak as it gets. And so in mid-2005, the goal was demonstrate Kuvan works like we knew it did and get approval. We made the decision back then to partner with Merck Serono and they would have the XUS rights to Kuvan. We went into the final negotiation with them. So we showed up and we said, hey guys, we've now moved into phase three. The program's much more advanced. We want an additional $25 million up front. They nearly fell out of their seats. It was a pretty bold move on our part. That moment, we need cash. And this was a big chunk of money, $25 million up front. That was gonna keep things going for a while more. The decision to make the deal with Merck Serono was just a, a purely financial decision based on the fact we needed a cash. It was not because we didn't believe in the future of this product. It was a lifeline. One of the medical directors from Biomarin gave a talk on the clinical trials for Kuvan. I said, I'm really interested in this, you know, I'd love to be involved. Managing my PKU was really frustrating. My mom really pushed for me to be in the trial of Kuvan. We enrolled 19 patients, and I think those early trials had over 300 patients involved. Just the first observations that it might be useful were a revelation. 2007, I like to think, was the lucky year for us, right? My daughter was born. It was with Kuvan, finally, there was something that helped your body metabolize fee better. In order to manage this disease successfully, we needed to lean on the support of others and those who went before us. We didn't meet another family with any children with PKU until my daughter was almost nine months old. Things began to change when we had BioMarin express an interest in the unmet needs in our community. BioMarin actually brought together 17 or 18 different state and regional organizations for a meeting to talk about the landscape of PKU in our country. And from there, the National PKU Alliance was born. The National PKU Alliance has just been a huge advancement in advocacy and education and treatments. It was just so great to see everybody coming together for a common cause. If you have a, a baby that was just born with PKU, it's going to be okay. My family took a vacation one time and I always thought it was really cool to be on planes and see the cockpit and the pilots up there. So I've been interested in planes and flying for as long as I can remember. I'm taking flight lessons, I'm studying really hard. For me, the normal fee level was anywhere between 10 and 14, which is pretty high. And then I started Kuvan and my levels dropped significantly. And nowadays a normal level for me is between a two and a five. I am 
Josh Bennett. I am 16 years old. Almost every day I have something going on, whether it's school, soccer practice, or even games. Kuvan helps lower my fee levels. I started taking Kuvan as like the clinical trial when I was five, and I'm 16 now, so I've been taking it for 11 years. You know, the children who've been born in the last 20 years, you know, they're pretty well connected. The, the medical establishment in that time knew that it was diet for life and that they needed to be in treatment. But there are those out there who were given the okay by their medical team to, to go without treatment. We know that thousands of patients are living out there and they have no idea that the difficulties they're facing are tied to their PKU. We didn't know about the detrimental neurocognitive effects of being off diet for so long. If you ask an adult patient who may have been off treatment for a number of years about their life, they would all have troubled relationships with significant others. Divorce rates are increasingly higher. Anger management mood disorders, ability to hold a job. So these people have horrible lives and it's underappreciated. I always knew I was different. I knew that something was weird about me or something not right. I'd get upset, I'd cry, and I didn't understand things people were telling me. And because of that, I didn't have any confidence in myself. I wasn't diagnosed till I was 12 years old. I have PKU. It was quite difficult because we didn't know what was going on. We didn't know that I was supposed to stay on diet. That's when we had our struggles in our marriage. That's when things were difficult. So it was from 1977 until 2013 I wasn't on diet. I couldn't do anything for myself. I always had to ask for him to help me and make a decision. The stress was huge, but I didn't relate it to PKU. I related it to life. There was one time I had one of those moments, and I just completely blew up. I was just crying and yelling. I thought, this can't go on like this. Treatment guidelines for PKU hadn't been revised probably for 20 years, so it was desperately needed that updated guidelines were put into place. Experts in the field of PKU, for the very first time in a very long time, really tried to draft a consensus. The ACMG treatment guidelines came out. It was the first time that it was truly emphasized that Kuban is the only pharmaceutical medication available and every patient deserves a trial for response. Also included is treatment for life. Before I went back to the clinic, my phenylalanine levels were at 24. It's the combination of taking the Kuvan and the diet that dramatically reduces the fee level. And I stay between 1.4 and 3. It makes me feel better. This works. She's feeling better. For Cindy to change, here's a girl that can do anything. That's the Cindy who is free who is confident, she is able to live life and enjoy life, and just be who she is. Since 2005, Biomarin had always thought about if we could potentially reacquire the global rights to Kuban. We went to Geneva, a few of us, and at the end of the day, we got the rights back. Which was very exciting for us, because now we have more of a PKU franchise. And I think nothing shows commitment like a challenge of integrating over 60 countries of Kuban within just a matter of weeks. I think we made the right decision. Kuvan works great. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't work for everybody who has PKU. Over half of the patients don't get any benefit from Kuvan. They tend to be patients with more severe form of PKU. There is a huge unmet need, and this is where Pegvalies is coming in. Pegvalies has been studied in patients who are 18 or older whose fee level has not been able to be in the therapeutic range despite any of the conventional approaches to bringing fee levels down. October of 2001 was a pretty heady time at the company, and we do this deal with a company in Montreal, Canada called Ibex. And when we did the deal, we did it for a product called Neutralase, and what came along with that was a product called Phenylase that was really secondary. 
No one attributed any value to it at all. It was only after we really started to dig into PKU with, with Kuvan and really start to drive that forward that people started to take another look at, at this asset. And they thought it would complement uh, what was becoming the Kuvan. Fenelace was one that might take longer but may work in a more potent way. We tried making crystals out of this. And they were beautiful crystals. They kind of looked like Rubik's cubes and we were going to deliver it as an oral formulation. And basically, it didn't work. Certainly when that failed, I knew that we would either have to kill the project or change it dramatically. And so now we came up with the notion, well, can we deliver this subcutaneously? And, and it was like, no, this is a bacterial enzyme. You can't do that. What is the human body built to do? It's built to fight bacteria. It sees it as an invader, as a threat. And so what we've done is we've used pegylation, or PEG for short, to try and mask it. Now you're talking about something that no one in the pharmaceutical industry has ever been able to do. This challenged Biomarin in the zone where Biomarin gets to be its best, which is innovating technical solutions. Pegylated bacterial-derived enzyme is extremely complicated. Here you're taking an essential bacterial protein, which the immune system is going to see and just wreak havoc on and we have to shellac it so it doesn't get seen. Peg Valley's development had its ups and downs, but the ups and downs were always more about how do we get to what this product can be. And that was a lot of years of blocking and tackling in, in the drug development side. So we moved it out of non-clinical and into clinical. Every problem we came across in the clinic just seemed insurmountable. It is a complicated product with a complicated dosing schedule and some fairly interesting side effect profile. We anticipated that there was going to be an immune response to the foreign protein, and we had to raise the dose to deal with the emerging antibody response, and then raise the dose some more, and then raise the dose some more. It was not a slam dunk. It's all around trying to balance that trade-off between the immune system and getting the fee lowering. There are many occasions in which confusion settles in because it's so complicated. There were so many safety issues, and I was actually really worried that that they were just going to say, uh, we're going to drop this clinical program. I was uh, very concerned and almost distraught at times. I think there are some pharmaceutical companies that might have just thrown in the towel. There have been at times where we were asking ourselves some questions or whether we should terminate the program because it's so expensive and you know, we have some, so much difficulty. So the fact that Biomarin has powered through is an example of their commitment to the PKU community. We then implemented a strategy that said, well, let's start with the most effective dose repeatedly. And about half the patients start having problems with that. And if you start pushing the dose too fast, it does make them sick. We've sort of learned how to manage that. A lot of that is you just have to slow down. I heard it described as the, uh, as the Goldilocks program, right? <laughs> Started out a little too slow, went too fast. Phase three was just right. At the time that we started to see fee lowering effectiveness for the very first time on a sustained basis, it was a real almost hallelujah moment. When the dietician told my parents that I have PKU, they were absolutely terrified because of my dad's brother. He has PKU and was born before newborn screening. Because of that, he was not treated at birth and suffered severe intellectual disability as a result. Everything that they put into my mouth, they were afraid and wanted to make sure that they were giving me what I needed, but not too much at the same time. When we were in college, the PKU guidelines were different. The recommendations thought that, well, you could relax the fee a little bit more when you were, you know, in your teenage and adult years and it would be okay. Looking back, part of college, I could definitely see how that affected me. I think focus was definitely hard. You know, the studying was more difficult. Not only the academic aspect, but, you know, I could definitely see even the athletic aspect, even playing tennis would suffer if you know my fee levels weren't under good control. I basically volunteered myself for any clinical trial that I heard of, and I finally received a call for PegPal. And the beginning of the trial was very difficult since you had to go in very frequently. The beginning, I believe, was five days a week that I had to go in. You know, with the beginning of the trial, it was 
an exciting time, but I did struggle with some reactions. There were times that, you know, I had pretty significant joint pain and I was in school, so, you know, that would be difficult to even hold a pencil while I was trying to take my exams if the joint pain was that bad. At one point, I had to take a nine-day break because the reactions got pretty bad. I mean, we definitely, throughout the clinical trials, saw, you know, higher incidence of hypersensitivity events in the first six months. But it's important to realize that this is a bacterial enzyme that we're putting into the body. The body's only doing its job. So it's putting up a fight. Once it realizes, you know, and gets used to the drug, that's when you kind of get to see efficacy. But the chances are, uh, you know, that you are going to see an injection site reaction, that, you know, you may see, you know, hypersensitivity reactions, and, and we have seen anaphylaxis, so it is important to be aware of that. So I was able to get through it all, luckily, and they found a good dose for me. I still vividly remember that day. They told me, Brittany, it worked. Your, your levels dropped far lower than any level I've had in my life. I started crying. I had called Brian, my now fiance, and told him, <laughs> I'm like crying through it. Now, for the first time, we have a chance to lower their feet to the levels where they can actually eat regular protein, participate in these activities without having to separate themselves. My 26th birthday, I was finally able to add more protein, and my fiance had asked me what I wanted for my birthday dinner, and I said, mac and cheese. <laughs> that is all I want. I've never had real mac and cheese, and that is what I want for my birthday. <laughs> We're hearing stories of patients that for the first time in the clinical trials were able to eat protein that you and I take for granted. We had one patient at 30 who tried their first boiled egg. I still love peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because it's something that I did not have as a child or even for the first 26 years of my life. This is a very different drug, and we were very proactive about the safety profile. We actually work with the FDA about putting the REMS program together. The REMS program is a risk evaluation mitigation strategy, and there are many drugs that have REMS programs, and the, the point of a REMS program is the risk versus benefit, to be sure that everybody is aware that anaphylaxis was, was seen throughout the study. And so this is really to monitor and to educate the physicians physicians, the patients, and the prescribers. So both the prescribers and the pharmacists need to be certified. He also needs to be sure to prescribe a epinephrine pen for the patients. And then the patients, the physician or the prescriber, needs to go through the REMS with the patient or what the symptoms of anaphylaxis are and what they should look for and what they need to do if these symptoms do appear. The product works. That's not the question. The question is, will the FDA be able to see that? And that's our job, is to help them. And I think the pivotal point of the whole thing was the FDA, rather than just completely making their decision based on the objective data, they requested the anecdotes. They requested the stories. Looking back six years ago, I definitely don't feel like I could have predicted half of what is going on now. I now work for Yale University in the Department of Genetics. Within the past few months, I was finally able to start the PKU clinic at Yale and really focus on PKU patients. The newborn screen visits are with a parent who comes in with a new baby who was just flagged on newborn screen, and they're usually absolutely terrified. There's often tears, um, you know, they're scared. That's when I usually say also, I have PKU myself, which I still never get sick of seeing that look on their faces. Just complete relief. Today we are celebrating the approval of Palinzeek. I just want to mention that I did present a timeline in 2006 to the executives, including JJ, about how long it would take. And I suggested approval would be in the end of 2011. That's when the BLA would prove that. Six and a half years off. There's not often that you get to work on a project over a 17 year period and see it come to a commercial success. I couldn't believe this day was finally here. Speaks to innovation, not only in the clinical arena, in the manufacturing arena, in the research areas, to, to be able to bring this to the patients that can benefit. We rushed out to the hallways, started hugging each other, and 
just big smiles and, and popped out the champagne. You can probably see it in my smile. It's just a satisfaction and a happiness for these patients and an excitement for them. It's been a long road and I've always been optimistic about its, uh, its prospects for approval. Within 24 hours, we had already a handful of patients that are already calling our Rare Connections asking for the drug. We've got physicians who are calling saying, train me so I can get my patients access. There were people at Biomarin that I think at several level, several times were willing to bag this, but I have to give the very highest leadership at Biomarin absolute credit for, for sticking with this. There were a lot of naysayers along the way that would tell you, well, we gotta, you got to stop, this product would never be approved by the FDA. I heard that many times. We made the right decision. Thank you to all involved here, and uh, let's drink to a great uh, time and great launch for Palinzik. It was an incredibly emotional experience. Still indescribable, still don't feel like I have perspective on it. You know, there's like almost so much exhilaration you can't process it, uh, and relief at the same time. Obviously happiness, pride. I think for me, the highlight of the day was picking up the phone and being able to call Christine Brown from the National PKU Alliance and sharing the news that after a decade of development, we're finally able to bring this option to adults with PKU. I just, I got tears in my eyes. I just, you know, it's like, thank you. Like, thank you for giving our community hope. Raise your hand if you've worked on something for 10 years, <laughs> you know, like the same project for like 10 years, chipping at it. You know, you, you, you know, how long did, uh, what's his name work on, uh, Michelangelo work on David? Just proud as hell. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? I'm good. Good to see you. You're interested in Pal and Zeke. Yeah. So eight years ago was the first time we heard about this. There's just this potential in the future where you would be able to have a medication that might, might let you eat more normal food. And it's a long ways off. And maybe it will happen sometime while you're in college. And she's in college and it's happening. This is an important milestone, but it's the beginning rather than an end. I want to get to a point where a patient with PKU does not really identify with the disease. We're really excited about introducing a new uh, IND candidate to gene therapy for phenylketonuria. I always used to tell patients that I hope when your baby becomes an adult that treatment will be different. To see that now coming to fruition, it's tremendously gratifying. Thank you.